There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads and I'm going to try to keep this one abbreviated. I put out a whole bunch of content this week. The two kind of year-end, beginning of the year videos I've recorded and edited and posted since you last saw me and that took a lot out of me because I've been battling this. I mean I have a chronic cough at the best of times and I don't want to piss and moan about this but I've had a chronic cough for years and then in the last week to eight days, it has become 10 times worse. So I'm coughing all the time. I took a rapid test. It's not COVID. I don't have any other symptoms. I did go to the doctor, got some medicine. It's improving very slowly. But I was, if you look at those videos, which many of you have, my besties and worsties and uh, most anticipated reads, I was not looking my best and I was coughing. It took me hours to edit out all the coughing. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet, I think, because I'm still uh, still in the, in the throes of all that. My sister had a similar cough last year. She said it lasted two weeks. So if mine is like hers, I've got five days to go or something. Anyway, so I don't have any personal news. All I've been doing is coughing, reading, and making videos. Okay, here's the first thing I forgot. I am debuting a new blouse. Isn't it fabulous? Thanks, Mom. Uh, here's the Week in Review. The next award is for sexiest writing or scene, and I do have a scene for you. I don't typically choose, or am not, and I'm not typically impressed by graphic sexual scenes. They rarely float my boat, but I'm fascinated by how sex in literature can be rendered in a sexual, in a sensual way without uh, going into too much detail. Those are the kinds that, that get me. So that's what the kind I've got. And this is from a novel pub. April 11th, Ballantine Books. Oh yeah, I love this cover and this title. Small Joys. This is a queer novel. An unexpected friendship saves a young man's life. The description of how they first, and they don't fall into bed. It's not that fall, it's, that is not the right verb to use, but, but the... the the description of how very relatable but how nervous people kind of how do you get into bed with each other and it's just it, it's not I'm, I'm kind of chortling but it's actually quite quite beautiful and so their relationship yeah. begins one of the things i really wanted from this book was to write about a relationship to write about love without writing about romance without softening any of the difficulties Yes. And so this is not the perfect relationship and they're not the perfect couple. And they're as awkward as people are. I think our culture really um, builds up a lot of, a lot of bullshit about, about relationships. Yeah. And lesbian literature does very much, not all of it, but a lot of it, uh, because it has been, you know, we've had such a hard time being open at all and finding each other at all that we want to think yes once you know once i come out it will be or once i find the right person everything will be solved happily and ever after everything isn't solved book number two is from canada our homesick songs by emma hooper and this was from 2018 she is a newfoundland writer and this is set in 1992 in newfoundland and if you know anything about what happened in Atlantic Canada in the early 90s. That was the collapse of the cod industry, the fishing industry. And so this is set in a, in a town in Newfoundland, and uh, everybody leaves Newfoundland to look for work. And the 10-year-old protagonist, Finn, who I believe we met in that passage, finds himself living in a ghost town. And let's get on to the books. I have finished three and started three no bales. Do you think 2023 is going to be the year of no bails? I, I think that's pretty unlikely, but who knows? Stranger things have happened, not necessarily on my channel. Yeah, just going to go through them as they come up on my pile. Last night I finished reading boat number five by the Slovakian writer, Monika Kopanikova, translated from the Slovakian by Janet Livingston. I read it to Lindy. We read it together that way over two weeks 
And while it wasn't a perfect novel, the things that I love about fiction um, were all there in spades. Is that the right expression? Um, oh, I, it was funny. Scott and several other people, I think, noticed that I used the word girth on, on my besties and worsties video and didn't make any, didn't, didn't, uh, make eyes at you or didn't make any jokes about using the word girth. That, that's how sick I was. And I'm still not at my most intellectually best. And I don't want any comments about that my intellectually best and less than best are virtually indistinguishable. Really strong characterization, very vivid, beautiful writing. And uh, what tipped it over into five stars for me was that it was a child-centered story, and I don't usually like them, and this one was superbly done. So, as I said maybe last week, the protagonist is a 12-year-old girl, I think she's 12, Yarka, and she's growing up with an extremely neglectful mother, and she's a very observant child. She's a very loving child, but of course, you know, when you are neglected like that, your need for love and your kind of search for people to love can get quite out of whack. And so that's the kind of story it is. It's the story threatened to go in a really dark direction and maybe I won't say any more than that other than that I would have been disappointed if it, if it had gone really dark and it didn't. Maybe that's a spoiler, I don't know. But she ends up, I don't like how the synopsis describes it because she ends up uh, looking after a, a strange woman, a, a woman she didn't know at the bus stop or the tram stop, looking after th her twin babies in the str in the pram while the mother ran up the, the long stairs. <laughs> My words are not really coming to me this morning um, to get a ticket. And then the mother never came back. And so our 12 year old narrator, Yarka, t just took the kids. I mean, she waited an awfully long time. I meant to double check with Lindy whether she thought that she waited an appropriate amount of time. To me it seemed like it was over an hour, maybe two hours. That's what That was my feeling. The mother never came back. So the mother abandoned her kids. Yarka took the kids and she took them to this garden that her grandfather used to own that has a little kind of a cabin or hut and did her best to take care of them. And her mother hadn't been home for days. Her mother didn't know where she was. Her mother didn't care where she was. And she was doing all this stuff. And then a little boy, neighbor boy, gets involved in the mix. And it was so beautiful. And you're always, the, Lindy and I were always on the edge of our seats because what's going to happen is, you know, when babies get sick and they need a lot of care that a 12 year old doesn't really know how to do it. Yarka didn't have any younger siblings. She didn't have a clue. But. Um, it all made sense within the, the world of the novel. The things that I didn't like are things that I don't care about so much. So it's the title, Boat Number 5, is a, a series of dreams that Yarka has about a blue boat. And I couldn't have given, I couldn't have cared less about any of that. But it didn't pull me out of the book. It didn't, um, I just didn't care about it. So I didn't let that affect my rating. And the one thing that is not the author's fault, and but this was a, I would say a bitter disappointment for me because I love Seagull Press, but th this was woefully unedited. So there were a ton, and I mean a ton, of typing mistakes, spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. I would say one on every five pages. And in the last five pages, at least one or two per page. And that's really disgusting. And again, I think that Seagull Press is, you know, it's it's brought Seagull Press down in my esteem because of the the egregious number of mistakes in this book. But I didn't penalize the author who wrote a wonderful novel for that flaw. I recommend it very highly. I also just this morning finished, finally finished, this 1947 British novel, Chatterton Square by E. H. Young. I did not read it in this edition because the print is too damn small for my aging eyes. So I read it on ebook and this is going to be a Zoom pseudo buddy read discussion with Linny who's been on my bite sized book chats a couple times and this we're going to be chatting about it in the coming days. I haven't decided if it's a four or a five star rating and I might wait until after my discussion with Linny to decide but I, I really quite enjoyed it. 
and I guess the first book I finished this year, I'd started in December, uh, this story collection, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century by Kim Fu. I only gave it three stars. The only story I loved is the one that I gave the my Best Short Story of the Year award with a tie, and one of them was the, the opening story here. And there was one other one that I quite liked, and the rest um, left me cold. So it's way too speculative and kind of experimental and all the stuff that I hate, but she did write two in here that really did speak to me. So that's good. That's progress for me. That's what I finished. What have I started? I have started this work of nonfiction, 100 Saturdays, Stella Levy and the, and the Search for a Lost World by Michael Frank. And this is beautiful so far. I have read 25 pages. Michael Frank is a novelist and memoirist. And somehow he met Stella Levy, who was 91, and she had grown up on the Isle of Rhodes, which is a kind of remote Italian island that is closer to Turkey by the map than it is to Italy, um, in the, the Jewish enclave called Juderia in the middle of the city. And she's just telling him about her life. It reads like a novel. He is a really great writer, and she is quite a character. We're still in the childhood days, um, and she comes. From, she came from an interesting and large family, and all the Jewish customs, some of which I'd never heard about, and I don't know how how prevalent they were, because I'm pretty somewhat familiar with Jewish customs and traditions, but certainly have been encountering some new ones to me. But this community was uh, sent to Auschwitz in 1943, when the Germans took over the island. So this family, I think, met a bad end. But Stella Levy, as far as I know, is still alive. She was 92 when these interviews, which were conducted over the course of 100 Saturdays, took place. And it's just a brand new release, like at the very end of 2022, I think, from Avid Reader Press. This is a big hit so far. And as a buddy read, which I, our first check-in is tomorrow, so I've got my reading cut out for me. I've got about uh, 60 pages to read before, between now and tomorrow. Greenland by David Santos Donaldson. I talked about it last week. It was on the video of Ryan's top favorite nine books of 2022, which is kind of what pushed Joe and I to, to read it. I abandoned the audiobook early. Unfortunately, the voice didn't take me deeper into the book. It, it was nice, but it you know if if the audio narration doesn't draw me in deeper, it's not going to work. So I, I I abandoned it, and I'm getting along much better just reading it. It's good. I mean, it's too early. I've read about forty pages, and it's certainly holding my interest. I think, in the interest of brevity, that's all I'll say. So far, so good. Oh my goodness! Yes, I forgot to talk about the third novel that I started. It's actually my favorite of the bunch, and they've all started out good. But this is The River Key by Sawaka Ariyoshi, translated from the Japanese by Mildred Tahera. I believe the original Japanese publication date was 1964 and maybe translated uh, in the early 80s. I'm loving it. It's set back in history. I'm not exactly sure when, but probably, oh no, around 1890s, actually. And it's reminding me a lot of Tanizaki's The Makioka Sisters. So if you loved the Makioka Sisters, which I certainly did, I think you would love this. And that's all I'm going to say about it for now, but I can't put it down. So those are what I've started. It's been a really great reading week. I've been pretty sick, but I've managed to do a certain amount of reading and, and was prioritizing video, getting the videos out. But you know, at least I can read. Sleeping, on the other hand, is a bit of a challenge. <laughs> I'm going to start too. Oh, and by the way, I'm thinking maybe in 2023, I'm not going to fuss about telling you how many I'm currently reading. Uh, I, I'm, I'm of two minds about that. But suffice it to say, math not being my strong suit, I thought I could start three and I would bring it down to 10 or something last week. And no, I'm way over 10. I'm actually a little bit over 12 books currently being read. So there you go. I've screwed up. So I'm going to give myself the month of January to get that all sorted out. But I have to start two more regardless because they're buddy reads and the check-ins are on Monday. 
The first one is a book that was on my most anticipated reads of 2022, and I'm finally getting to it early in 2023. And this is this memoir, Boys in Oil by Taylor Brorby, Growing Up Gay in a Fractured Land. I haven't heard any reviews of it, but it uh, certainly appeals to me. Taylor Brorby grew up in North Dakota, oil country, and uh, grew up gay in kind of a rural area. So that all resonates with me. And it sounded very interesting to Heidi, so we're going to buddy read it. I've been craving some more Edna O'Brien. So the next one that she published after the Country Girls trilogy was this one. August is a wicked month. It was published in 1965, and this is going to be a buddy read between me and Sonia of An Enthusiastic Reader. I can't wait. So I'm, this is maybe one of my shortest Friday reads on record, but uh, I, I told you what I wanted to tell you. I kept it short, saved my voice, won't have to spend the whole rest of the day editing it, and I can have some more naps and hack up a lung. I hope you're feeling better than I am right now, and I hope your new year is starting out good reading-wise and otherwise. Thanks for watching.